Yes or no? So I start, guess. I guess. Great. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Victor, and I work in the infrastructure team here at Zeroavia. Um, today, I'll be giving a, a quick presentation about what we do in the infrastructure team, uh, and I'll try to answer three questions that we have. Um, uh, the first question is, what's the challenge that we're trying to solve? The second one is about uh, our vision uh, about infrastructure on airports. And finally, I'll talk about what we've done so far. and. Uh, and the different uh, collaborations that we started to build. Um, so the first question I, 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 want, I would like to answer is uh, how are we going to refuel our aircraft uh, with hydrogen? This is the, a very often, I mean, a question we get very often uh, from customers uh, because it's one of the main challenges that we may have in the future. Um, while a lot of progress has been done in terms of uh, high, I mean, very mobile mobility applications for cars, buses and trucks, uh, a lot of work remains to be done for aviation. Um, so uh, what you see here on the slide is uh, on, the, on the left hand side you see what uh, hydrogen refueling station currently uh, looks like today. Um, so it's uh, made for buses, cars and, uh, and, uh, and trucks. 
but it's definitely not, not made for high uh, volume applications like maritime and, uh, and aviation. So there's definitely a challenge there. The second image shows what a refueling truck looks like today. It's uh, very big, uh, it contains liquid hydrogen, so a lot of energy. So it's very difficult to uh, actually operate in an airport ecosystem uh, with uh, a lot of, a lot of air, air, aircraft, sorry. Uh, so Zero Area will def definitely have to, um, to play a key role uh, in, this, uh, in this challenge. Uh, and the way we present our offering to our customers is we want to come with a, a turnkey solution, so a one-stop shop. Um, so we're offering both, I mean, the engine first, of course, but also the maintenance and the fuel, the hydrogen. So our vision as far as uh, infrastructure at airports is concerned is, um, is uh, looks very much uh, how it looks on the slide now. Um, so as I said, we need to ensure that uh, our custom we get hydrogen to our customers' plane. Um, so our, our mission on the ground is to, uh, to come with a safe and resilient supply of low cost, low carbon hydrogen. Um, and the way we, we, we do this, the process starts with uh, a renewable production of electricity. So uh, we're developing, sorry, we're developing um, uh, a, few, a few solutions. Um, so we're looking at electrolysis uh, in the first place. So electrolysis is, uh, is uh, consists in, uh, in breaking the water molecule into, into its main components, which are hydrogen and oxygen. We take the hydrogen, we store it uh, on the airport or near the airport, and then we, uh, we do the last mile delivery or the last 100 meters with uh, what we call a refueling truck, uh, either gaseous for the first product that we're gonna uh, commercialize and uh, liquid uh, refueler uh, in, the second, uh, in the second step. I guess now a, a quick, uh, maybe a quick uh, uh, one-on-one uh, discussion around what's, uh, I mean, gaseous and liquid hydrogen. So gaseous hydrogen is the most common uh, form of hydrogen today for mobility applications, so it's, it's uh, a very high gravimetric density uh, compared to kerosene, so that's great. For one kilogram of hydrogen, you have 3.6 times more um, energy than in a kilogram of kerosene, so that's very good news for us. But at the same time, we have problems coming in when, uh, when you look at volume, because a kilogram of hydrogen actually takes a lot of space. So you have two, I mean, today we have two norms. We compress it to 350 bar or 700 bar for mobile applications like cars and trucks. But if you want to take less space, if you want hydrogen to take less space than it does uh, in compressed gas form, then you need to liquefy it. But then you actually enter a new set of challenges because it's, uh, it's uh, very cold. It needs to be cooled down to uh, minus 253 degrees, uh, which requires uh, cryogenic equipment. Um, and as soon as uh, you don't maintain this temperature, this very low temperature, you actually have something that's called boil off. So the liquid goes back to its gaseous state uh, and uh, by this process you're losing, I mean, there's a, an economic li leakage and you're also uh, actually, it's a greenhouse gas, so it's not great uh, if you vent it. So maybe a few words about all the progress that we've done so far. Um, so we've, um, of course the challenge is big and we, we won't actually solve it by ourselves. So uh, we have a, a dual approach. We are um, working on our, we're developing our own products uh, internally, but we are also relying on uh, several partners uh, in, the, in the supply chain of hydrogen. Uh, as far as our products are concerned, um, I can uh, speak to what we've done here, uh, I mean not here, sorry, in our, in our facilities in, uh, in California and in, uh, in, uh, in the UK, in Campbell. Uh, we've actually come up with uh, uh, an end-to-end -end production of hydrogen um, with uh, some smart, uh, I mean, power management and grid management. Uh, so that we actually produce hydrogen in the most efficient way, uh, connected to a solar panel and uh, using the solar electricity when it's available. Um, the second product that we've developed and we've um, commissioned last year is uh, a land side to air side uh, pipeline. Um, so the hydrogen is uh, coming from the land side to the air side directly to be able to refuel the aircraft uh, at the, on the apron. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, and as you saw on the previous slide, um, we are also refueling or we are also sorry developing uh, refueling trucks so gaseous and uh, and liquid so as I said we we need a lot of uh, partners to uh, to help us achieve this goal by 2025 which is the entry into service of our first uh, air um, uh, powertrain 
Um, and uh, to do so, we have uh, partners in the production of hydrogen space, but also technology partners for liquefaction, uh, electrolysis, uh, and amongst others. So we're working with Shell, who is uh, an invest investor in our, in our capital structure, uh, and we're also working with companies like ProDrive, uh, Gen H2 for liquefaction, Hapsuit Hydrogen as well, um, and, um, and Zev Station uh, for refuelers. As far as, uh, last but not least, sorry, the, the airports are a key, uh, of course, a key stakeholder in this, uh, in this chain. So we are uh, working with uh, a lot of them across the world. Uh, we have uh, collaborations going on with uh, the Schiphol Group uh, and more specifically the Rotterdam Airport, uh, but also with uh, airports, in the, in the airports in the UK, uh, such as uh, Aberdeen, Glasgow, uh, Southampton, um, airports in, uh, in France as well, uh, with uh, Aéroport de Paris. Um, which we signed an agreement with yesterday uh, to explore um, the possibility of installing um, infrastructure for hydrogen here at Le Bourget. So here, this is uh, everything I had to say uh, so far for, I mean, on infrastructure. Um, Peter Gallen, my colleague and, uh, and myself, would be happy to answer any of your questions uh, if you're interested to hear more. Thanks for your attention. Um, great question. So I guess, uh, sorry, the, the question is around what are the, the benefits of, uh, for airports of having a hydrogen um, infrastructure on the ground? Um, I guess the main, uh, the, I mean, a few things, but uh, we need to be prepared for, we need to be ready for this uh, decarbonized aviation because uh, as, uh, as Zero Avia, but many others are, are showing today, it's actually happening now uh, and it will be operating in the next few years. Uh, so being ready in terms of infrastructure is, is, uh, is paramount and it's not that easy because you need to start from scratch. Today, uh, nothing exists for hydrogen at airports. Um, and I guess it's not the only reason why um, airports are interested in, in such infrastructure. Um, hydrogen is a way to, um, is a good way to actually decarbonize not only aviation, but a lot of, uh, of, uh, of fuses actually on the ground as well. Uh, it could be industrial, like steel making or, or refinery but also mobile applications as, uh, as we talked about. So trucks, buses, I mean, heavy duty vehicles that are very hard to, uh, to decarbonize with batteries, for instance, uh, but also cars. Um, so that's definitely something we're looking at with, uh, with airports, uh, with our partners. Uh, and, uh, and GSE, sorry, is one thing I should have mentioned as well. GSE is the, the, gr the ground service equipment that, that are actually operating on, a, on the apron uh, to uh, refuel the, the aircraft or to uh, Unload the baggage, the luggage, for instance. The luggage, for instance. Uh, these are also stuff that we could uh, decarbonize. Uh, where are the likely to be the first airports uh, with hydrogen infrastructure installed in the new uh, flights? The question is around what would be the first airport that would uh, that is very likely to uh, to, to actually install uh, hydrogen infrastructure. Um, I think so. Amongst our, our partners, we are. Uh, we are building infrastructure. I mean, we're looking at building infrastructure in, uh, in on all continents actually. But um, we will follow the customers. Uh, so um, it depends on where our customers are going to be are going to be operating first. Uh, of course, uh, today we'll have demonstration um, in uh, in the next few years. So before uh, the entry into service of our of our aircraft. Um, so in 2025, we have a project with uh, with Rotterdam Airport, for instance, uh, uh, in conjunction with uh, with Shell as well. Uh, where we will be um, refueling uh, an, uh, an airport, an aircraft, and, uh, and fly, fly it to uh, to, uh, to uh, a different, uh, sorry, from Rotterdam to a different uh, uh, capital city in Europe. What's the, what's the most likely type of hydrogen that's going to be used by airports? Is it going to be uh, green, blue, or pink? Um, so, very good question. So we we are uh, looking at uh, at uh, electrolytic uh, hydrogen, uh, as I mentioned. Which, uh, which is green hydrogen, I mean low carbon hydrogen. So we're looking to use solar energy, uh, either through uh, solar panels that are, would be on site or near site, but also via purchase, I mean, power purchase agreement. Um, so through the grid uh, to source uh, electricity as, uh, as low carbon as possible. Um, and then electrolysis will happen either uh, on site uh, or close to, to, to the airport uh, because it's easier. It's actually easier to move electrons Rather than uh, rather than hydrogen, um, 
But uh, yeah, green is definitely our priority, but we're also looking at uh, different other solutions uh, like pink hydrogen, as you mentioned. One question. Of course. So how do you see the importance of uh, supplier ecosystem in bringing up this uh, futuristic project? Sorry, still again, sorry? The supplier ecosystem, yeah. how do you see the importance of them in getting up this uh, futuristic project? So the question is around um, the, the, the suppliers and how important the ecosystem of suppliers uh, is uh, for, for us to achieve this, uh, this goal in, in, in terms of infrastructure. Uh, it's a very interesting question. So, of course, hydrogen has been produced, is produced today in great quantities, right? Uh, but it's, it's very polluted. It's very what we call grey hydrogen. Um, so there's a, a lot of players today are on the production side, on the infrastructure side, are looking at decarbonizing this existing hydrogen um, through gr green hydrogen, as we mentioned, but uh, also, also sources, other sources. Um, I think we... We definitely need to rely on these on these players. Um, our, our view is that in the first instance, the volumes won't be uh, gigantic. So we will look at uh, at small scale um, production and liquefaction uh, on site. But of course, uh, in the in the mid term and in the long term, we'll be looking at um, at relying on uh, like established players, like people like Air Liquide, for instance, or Air Products uh, that are producing hydrogen in, in in great quantities and that are moving towards low carbon hydrogen. Uh, we'll be relying on them to uh, to uh, fuel our aircraft as well. I think it, the, the question is is interesting around. It's going to depend on uh, on a lot of factors. Uh, there won't be one archetype that we're going to apply everywhere. Uh, it will depend on scale. It will depend on location. It will depend on the on the, the, the carbon intensity of the grid in each different country, uh, but also the real estate available next to the airport. So a lot of questions that uh, that need to be answered, of course. <laughs> Thanks for the question. question. Um, I guess if you have any, any further questions, uh, please feel free to ask, otherwise we're going to conclude this, uh, this presentation. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.